back over here, uh, you would see very little in, in terms of radar echo at all. Because in this area where the sun is shining, you have giant hail falling, and there's one stone over here and one stone over there, and so the sun shines through. Uh, this photograph has been reproduced in a number of textbooks, and it's been reversed. Because the people couldn't believe that, they always thought, well, tornadoes in the southwest part of the storm. Well, it is in the southwest part of the storm. The precipitation is out over here. It's just the sun is shining. When I, when I grew up in Boston, I always thought severe thunderstorms were those in which it got dark and it looked menacing and evil looking. That's absolutely not the case. In many instances, tornadoes, the sun is shining, it's, it's rather beautiful as it is here. There's another LP storm. If you can get the impression that I love LP storms, <laughs> this was what I called the perfect storm chase. This is back in 2000. And I left Boulder in, uh, in the afternoon. I couldn't get anyone to chase with me. And I drove in my own car, no radar, no internet, no nothing. And I drove up to the Pawnee National Grasslands. Uh, and uh, I expected there to be a supercell. And I waited all day, nothing happened. And at 6 o'clock, there was 6 o'clock magic. Frequently, nothing happens until 6 o'clock, and then at 6 o'clock, all hell breaks loose. And there you see a fairly large tornado with a wall cloud. There are some uh, virga falling from the anvil producing microbursts, and very large hail falling here. But you can see the sun is shining through the entire so-called storm. Another characteristic of, of, of these LP storms is they produce very little lightning, almost no, in fact, no cloud to ground lightning. So it's hard even to call this a thunderstorm. I like to call them convective storms. There is, there was some lightning, but it was up in the end. So anyway, uh, you don't see these in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> and there's your classic, classic tornado that we know and love. And there's the wiz what I call the Wizard of Oz tornado out at Cordell, Oklahoma. This was on a day in which I saw nine tornadoes. I'm only telling you about the good days. You can ask me later about the bad days. We left Norman. This, these, those days don't happen anymore. We left Norman. We got a flat tire. I thought that the day was all over with. We got the flat tire fixed. We, it out. we drove right to the tornado. We saw nine in a row and then ended back in Norman for dinner. <laughs> Never happened like that again. Uh, this is back in 2004. There's a tornado imitating a rainbow out in Kansas. And there's a biggie, a big cylinder. This is a big F4 tornado that hit Binger, Oklahoma. This is the only tornado I've ever heard. Uh, I've seen hundreds of tornadoes, and I'm convinced that in order to hear the so-called freight train roar that people report, you have to be in the tornado. And we try not to be in the tornado. We usually try to, to, uh, to position ourselves a couple of miles away. This I could actually hear. There's a, this is an F5 tornado uh, at Red Rock, Oklahoma. And some of you may have seen my video from this. Uh, but uh, we, this is the first time that we had made measurements with a portable Doppler radar. And this was the first uh, recorded measurements of F5 wind speeds with our portable Doppler radar. That's actually the first verification of F5 wind speeds in the tornado back in 1991. Some tornadoes have multiple vortices. In fact, back in the olden days, uh, Ted Fujita found <coughs> cycloidal damage map, di cycloidal damage paths uh, in cornfields, and he proposed that there are suction vortices, multiple vortices, rotating around a, a large main tornado. And it was controversial. I mean, people made fun of him. And now when we go out in storm chase, we see multiple vortices. Of every, every third or fourth tornado has, is a multiple vortex tornado. And frequently, we see tornadoes oscillate between single vortex and multiple vortex. Uh, in this particular tornado, one, two, three, four, I can see five funnels, and there may be some on the other side that, that we can't see from here. This tornado, by the way, moved over uh, uh, Altus Air Force Base doing quite a bit of damage. Here's another multiple <coughs> tornado. This was during the big uh, May 3rd outbreak, the day that Oklahoma City got hit. And we picked up the first tornadoes southwest of Oklahoma City. 
And it was this storm that kept going like the Energizer Bunny, producing tornado after tornado after tornado. And we had a great vantage point looking down. We had our mobile Doppler radar. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. But I didn't have any video equipment with me. But there you have one little suction vortex. And if you look closely, you can see how helical it is. Second suction vortex beginning. Now we have a pair of suction vortices. And now we go for the carousel. One, two, three, four, five, six funnels. And notice how they're all, most of them are pointed in towards the middle. The other thing I want to point out is that when you have a multiple vortex tornado, you don't have literally a carousel of, 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 of uh, smaller vortices. The vortices start in one place and rotate part of the way around the tornado and then disappear. So you see them forming and rotate halfway around or so and then disappear. Uh, I've also chased water spouts. This was from a, a day back in 1993. Joe Golden uh, and National Geographic and I went up in a helicopter. This was great fun. You sit in an open helicopter with your legs dangling out. My wife, Kathleen, probably doesn't want to hear about this. <laughs> and even though it's the middle of the summer in the Florida Keys, you're flying at cloud base, near cloud base. So you do the math. You figure out uh, what the lapse rate is. It's pretty cold. So we're wearing flight suits. And it's just fantastic to look down in the water and look at this. Now, this particular water spout is only about 10 meters across. And I could estimate the winds in the water spout by tracking uh, 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 ocean spray. And the winds, I would guess, were about 100 miles an hour. Very, very small. I also want to point out to you, I've had arguments with colleagues over this, but a lot of my colleagues claim that water spouts begin on convergence lines and, and outflow boundaries and all sorts of things like this. Look at the ocean. Can you find any evidence in the ocean that this water spout is along the wind shift line or anything? No. I don't. I don't. <clears throat> This is a big water spout, and some people have luck. Sometimes I get lucky. I took this picture during my first professional conference. I was a graduate student. I went to the Tropical Meteorology Conference in Key Biscayne. By the way, these trees all removed by Hurricane Andrew in 1992, no longer there. There was water spout after water spout after water spout. I almost missed my, my first talk. <laughs> Boy, talk about loosening up for your first talk. Now, when I was chasing one day back um, uh, in the early 1980s, we were driving to a supercell in Texas. We were still we were going to Texas to see a supercell. And by chance, we had People Magazine with us. They wanted to see carnage. <laughs> so we're driving, we're driving down towards Texas. And I looked out uh, to the back of, uh, of, our, of our van to talk to one of my students who was in the back seat. And I saw a tornado out the back of the window. Now, it's very embarrassing when you're going one way to chase a tornado. And you look out the back of the car, there's another tornado. And I called up Don Burgess uh, on the radio telephone, not cell phone, and said, Don, what do you have on Doppler radar? And he said, we don't have anything. And I said, well, Don, we're looking at a tornado. And I said, well, it looks like a water spout, but it's over land. So I gave it the name land spout. And it turns out that land spouts, of course, we now know a lot about them. They tend to form not in supercells, but in convective clouds when they're growing up into storms. This is a land spout that I took a few years ago down in uh, Lyman, 